So you probably clicked this video in a mad rage over the title, and that would be fair. But before you get super mad at me or tell me I'm wrong, I need you to hear me out. I've prepared a lot of compelling reasons to back up my statement, and if you haven't learned anything by the end, you can say, that you told me so. So when it comes to touring, it can 100% be a completely smart financial move and a great way to turn a moderate fan into an absolute megaphone for you and your music. But you are probably not ready. Probably. The overwhelming majority of base level touring I've seen people go on, as well as some of my own experience, has shown that touring can be an absolute waste of your time, energy, and resources. Wait, stop, stop. How are you supposed to tell me what to do with my awesome band? Do you even know how to play music? Have you ever been on tour? Oh yeah, so I've toured over half the country in two bands, one that I don't think I can name because of an NDA, but the other one being a hired gun for Hale Sagan. And I've played everything from empty rooms to massive festivals opening for Tool, Coheed, and Primus. Yes, part of that is a humble, not so humble brag, but it's important that I establish authority on the topic in that I do have a lot of experience in this. And a lot of the reasons I talk about today are actually part of the reason why I do not tour anymore. And lastly, before we jump in, I wanna say that touring is so much fun. It is an absolutely crazy adventure with tons of hilarious stories. You get a, such a close, close, intimate bond with the people you tour with. And I absolutely feel honored when I'm brought on the road by any band or artist, and they trust me to bring their art to life in the best way possible. Actually, if you wanna see a video about some of my favorite insane tour stories, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure you're subscribed and have the bell turned on. Without further ado, let's jump in. Okay, I think we got everything we need for the road, guys, but let's just, let's just run over the list one more time. Uh, gear, check. Uh, one pair of socks for a week, check. Lens that makes it look like there's more people in the room than there are, Check. Number one, the finances make zero sense. When it comes to the money, and especially in the touring world, there's somehow this myth that paying your dues means that you have to lose thousands and thousands of dollars to just go out on the road to like prove that you're a real band and it's all about just eating dirt and grinding, bro. And I have no idea where that crap came from. While I agree that you do have to start at the bottom and work your way up, the bottom doesn't have to mean $5,000 worth of debt just to say that you went on the road. Let me show you some simple math to illustrate this point. Okay, so let's break down some numbers. Honestly, I'm gonna go a really optimistic DIY tour because I don't want people coming in and saying, well, I got these advances, I got these guarantees, or I did this, this, that. So I'm gonna play it really optimistic for you. So let's say you're pulling in about $100 to $200 a night, which is a very good guarantee for a DIY band that has no following in that area, and it's honestly a bit optimistic. But let's say you're doing 150 a show, then you have probably five shows in a week, and we're gonna keep this to just a one week run. And to do five shows a week, assuming you know, you're know you able to coordinate all those dates really well, which is again, really difficult. We have 750 bucks right here off the top. So now let's say all these shows went super well. You had a pretty good turnout and you sold a few shirts, a few CDs, which again is probably more than how an average DIY run would go. Let's say you did $50 of merch at a show for five shows, that's 250 bucks. That's a pretty reasonable amount of merch to assume that you're gonna sell overall. So that puts us off at a thousand doll hairs for your income for the tour. Now, let's look at the other end because it's way less sexy, but way more what's probably gonna happen. So, uh, whoop, let's look at expenses. Let's assume you are a four piece band, which is an average amount, and you probably spend more than 15 bucks, but let's assume you're spending $15 a day for four people, that's $60 a day for seven days of food. That's already $420. And let's say a conservative $50 is being spent on gas every single day. And this is assuming, again, you might look at the miles per gallon on any van that you have now, but it's severely limited once you put all that gear in there. $50 times seven is 350, so we already have $350 here for gas. That's 770. And then let's assume that you are gonna to need to update your gear. You're gonna to need to do last minute things to get ready, to get things prepped. That's gonna be an additional $200. Because if we think about an oil change for the thousands of miles, we think about new gear, you know, up cleaning up your gear, getting the shirts ordered, getting them expedited quicker, um, adapters for the car, it adds up really quick. And that leaves within that 200 little contingency fund in case something breaks. So we are at 970 in total. So that puts us pretty much at breaking even. And that's a very, very optimistic financial situation as well as a very conservative expenses situation. So you know what? I just can't wait for this conversation when you get home. Hey babe, I missed you. How was tour? Did you accomplish things? Uh, no, not really, but we got super trashed with bleeding foot fungus. But wait, 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 we got like three more likes on Facebook. But okay, so how can you get your finances right when it comes to a tour? 
How are you able to make as much money as possible, have it be as big of a fan building, brand building win? What is that gonna look like? I would start by trying to build an entire tour off of show swaps. And very simply, that's you building rapport with bands outside of your area and then saying, hey, I'm in California and you're in Arizona. If you book a show and have us open for you, we'll do the same when you come to LA. This makes bigger shows for everybody. You're gonna have better turnout, sell a lot more in merch, and you're already gonna have a band that's gonna be advocating for you before you even get there, which has been a big issue with promoters as a lot of times you do these DIY shows, not a lot of promotion may go into it, and then you show up and you play into an empty room. It's super lit. And it's important to do your due diligence on these bands. It's very easy for bands to perhaps say that they will and not follow through, or for a band to say that they're bigger than they are. So spend time, invest in the band who is going to invest back into you and make sure they're the right fit and are gonna hustle hard for that show. And the last part here is to just be patient and recognize that touring is not always the answer. And I know the answer of, well, how do I tour? The best way being don't tour isn't a great answer, but it's true. If the objective is to make some money every night playing a gig and meeting new people, it may not be the best idea to do that and you can likely do that in your local scene. But John, you're leaving out so many things. It's not just about the money, it's about making fans, man. That's how we do it. We go on the road, we make fans. Oh, okay, okay. So your point is that you're making true dedicated fans because you're on the road being them in person. Uh, I mean, that's fair, but are you doing it effectively? Conveniently, that bit that I just wrote segues right into my second point. Number two, your customer acquisition and retention is trash. If you're going on tour or considering it, it's important to know and remember that your band or your art is a business and you're in the business of acquiring and retaining customers at scale. And that's not an easy task at all and I'm not saying I'm the master at it, but most every single time a fan interaction looks like this. Someone's at the booth, you chat with them and they peruse the wonderful merch custom made for the tour. You get them to like your Facebook page and then they leave. Cool, they're on a platform that has a 2% likelihood of actually showing them your content and that was your only gateway to that person. You just lost a potential lifelong fan because you did not have the interaction systems to keep them in your world. This blows my mind because that person was already into you. So the hardest part of the acquisition battle was already won. I can say that anybody who comments on a YouTube video or any piece of my content, I take the time and I send them a DM. I try to get to know them and get really genuinely interested in their world and tends to be that they will reciprocate the same feeling back. That has been an absolutely pivotal way for me to start building that baseline of a following. And I would recommend that if you're in the music world, you do that as well. So what would this look like for a band that's looking to go on the road and gain dedicated, engaging fans at scale? What I've done and what I'd recommend anybody does is the moment that you interact with somebody, make sure that you get them on at least one social platform and have it happen on your phone. Don't just have them like something of yours. Be the one to actively like or follow their page from your personal account and then immediately screenshot that account. Then at the end of the night, you're gonna have a list of uh, you know anywhere from two to 20 to 30 to 50 people who have shown an interest in what you were doing that evening. Then you go through one by one through all the photos, message them, talk to them, see what's up, at least say a thank you for them coming out to the show. And this does not just apply on social media. You can be doing this with a phone number if you have a band text number and especially on email as well. Expressing gratitude and then getting to know them builds that sense of reciprocity, family and community that you are truly looking to build if you're looking to build that music at scale. But dude, the grind, it's about us all dedicating all of our time to the band, bro. Oh, perfect. Let's talk about time, because number three is that touring is an absolute waste of the collective's time. So let's say we have four people spending 16 hours a day on the road, which, you know, accounts for not being asleep and all that good stuff, because we sleep, no matter what. Time seven is, I already did the math off screen, 448 hours that went into this tour. So let's say from our previous example that you had about 40 people at a show, which again is generous. And let's say you're retaining about 5% of the audience when it comes to the long-term lifelong fan value. And again, two people per show that are lifelong fans, that's about 10 fans. So divided by 10, you just spent about 45 hours per fan. 45 hours to acquire one single fan. Now let's look at the other situation, which is what I do with Facebook community conversation and community building. I probably spend about 45 minutes, but we'll round it up to an hour. Let's just say I spend an hour a day to get to know people, talk to them, build relationships. And let's say I, I get, tend to get about one or two people a week that I build a lasting long-term relationship with. So I'm spending seven hours a week on it to get about 1.5 fans or followers. That's, oh God, that's a hard piece of math, four-ish. Oh, this is really well done. 
I'm crushing. So for me, it takes about four to five hours to be able to acquire one person who's gonna stay in my long-term network. And that's anything that anybody can do from the internet, as opposed to four people spending all of their time, all their waking hours on the road to be acquiring one person at that speed. And again, I know these numbers aren't absolute. There's no right or wrong. This isn't the only way to do it on the road, but that is a generous estimation for the amount of time that's gonna go in to a DIY tour and what you're realistically going to get out of it. So that is exactly what I would recommend everybody in the band does. And I understand that with people's schedules, you may not be able to put in that much time or effort, but however much you can do will be super helpful. And it's also important to keep in mind that if you're on the road, that can be done on your phone in the van or in the car. There's no excuse to not be putting any of your downtime into community building online. And keep in mind, this is participate, not spam a group. Maxi Drums and Julian Gray both attributed a large portion of that beginning piece of building a following from fostering relationships in online communities. And since I've taken that advice, I can 100% say that that is super true. And the other thing I haven't even talked about yet, which is so massive, is the fact that all those hours in the van are hours not spent at your day jobs or at other jobs, making money that can then be put back into it. And I think there's just a massive disproportionate loss that happens when you're spending all that time in the van and then struggling financially instead of taking the time and really saving up and investing in the band in a whole new level. And not to mention that money can also be spent to run ads to possibly find new fans. So is touring a waste? <sighs> Probably, yeah. Everything that you want to accomplish by going on tour can be accomplished locally or regionally. You want to meet new people, you want to make new fans and make new connections and scale up your following. I truly doubt that you've gone to every single venue and every single open mic and every single music related event in your city or in a 50, 100 mile radius. There's plenty of potential circles that are sitting right in your own backyard. And while it's not as sexy to post about on the internet that you're going to a local venue to meet people in a practical and effective and cheap way, it is 100% a great way to build the foundation for your career. Well, you made it this far in the video. That's super cool. I want to say a massive thank you for doing so. And you definitely enjoyed the content if you made it this far. So make sure to like the video, subscribe, turn on the bell. You're doing all the things that I ask you to do because it's love. I've given you love by being here for you. So now you give me love back. Maybe we got a little love thing going on. Maybe we start dating. Maybe we got a little online relationship happening. Just kidding. I'm already taken. Sorry.